Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Smoke Signals. I'm Matt Montgomery, along with head football coach and athletic director Wayne Coleman. Jacksonville gets a huge win last week at Tomato Bowl over the Ennis Lions. The first time Jacksonville has defeated Ennis since 1989. And I know Coach uh, Jacksonville and Ennis have not played uh, every year since 1989, but uh, they've won the last three. This was a sweet win. Number one, beating Ennis uh, won state championship two years ago, and they're the big dog in the district. But more importantly, put your team in position coming this Friday to put yourself in the playoffs. Yeah, it's uh, put us in a good spot. We know we can uh, wrap things up with a playoff spot if we get a win this week over Lindale. It was um, what I call one of those slobber knocker games. I mean, there wasn't a lot of mistakes, only one turnover, and it was a huge one we'll see on video at the end of the game. Well, was that? No, well, I don't count the onside kick as a turnover, but sure. that's kind of a takeaway. Uh, but uh, you did win the takeaway battle again. Coach, that puts you at plus four for the season on takeaways. That, that's one of those things, those uh, statistics that people don't pay, pay attention to much, but that's a big one. It is. Uh, it changes the whole dynamic of the game. Uh, the pressure uh, that it puts on the other team uh, when, they, when they lose a possession, especially when you're playing a team like us that's a ball control offense, you're, only, you're getting limited uh, possessions anyway. Mm -hmm. And then when you, uh, we take the ball away a couple times, then it really puts the pressure on them. You won the flip again. You're getting pretty good at winning those coin flips there, Coach. And mm -hmm. you take the ball and you go down and score again. To my count, I think that's four games now where you've won the toss uh, for the eight got ball games, and you've gone down and, and scored on the first drive. Yeah, uh, our kids are doing a really good job of uh, just executing right now. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's a credit to them. They come to practice every day, and, and they put the work in, the grind in. We don't change a lot of things up on offense, uh, so we're not making very many mistakes. Coach, from a, a physicality standpoint, uh, Ennis just a a large team. They're just they have a lot of big, large linemen, and it just didn't seem to play out that way for them. As Jacksonville seemed to be just as physical as Ennis. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we've mentioned it before. We haven't talked about it lately, but we had such a really good off season. Uh, we had kids. Uh, uh, that made it to almost every single summer workout. Uh, the spring workouts were great. Um, uh, the kids uh, took care of their nutrition. We put a lot of uh, muscle on the kids in the last six months. And uh, it's one of those things that when you're doing it, you keep telling them this is going to pay off, and they're starting to see it happen. You know, with a team like Ennis that just takes the football and just controls it and runs the ball a lot like Alvarado did in week five that you, that you said kind of prepared you for the Ennis game, uh, another week where Jacksonville milked the clock. I mean, you had the ball seven more minutes than Ennis did. They ran more plays, but uh, clock management was something at the forefront of this ball game, I think, that, that was a key, and, and you won that battle. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we purposely want to try to uh, keep the ball away from the other team, especially when you're playing somebody that's got a, a big offensive line like they do that's going to wear you down on defense. And uh, uh, the plan worked out well. The kids executed. Uh, we kept the ball. Uh, and we finally got them in a position in the game when they got behind with not much time left that, that they couldn't just keep running the ball. They had to throw it. We're going to look at some of the big plays here in just a minute, but in my mind, some of the things like when it was 20 to 20, actually it was 20 to 13 Jacksonville, and they scored tw two times in a row. I believe that's right, or did they, we, did they score first? Yeah, they went up uh, 26 to 20. 26 to 20, mm -hmm. and you're feeling like, oh, we got to get something done here. And uh, then you get the big touchdown to, to, to Cam Franklin. And, and uh, talk about that play right there, because to me, besides the fumble recovery we'll see in a minute by Scooter Baker, uh, that play right there was, it was fourth down. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, fourth and nine at about midfield. Um, we were in a situation there, um, I think it was uh, early in the fourth quarter, where uh, if we go for it uh, and don't get it, they get the ball. Um, they get the ball with the lead at midfield in the fourth quarter. And uh, we didn't really want to punt the ball down to them. We felt like if we gave them the ball on an on a 80-yard field that uh, they might, you know, go to the, you know, three yards in a cloud of mm -hmm. dust on us and, and play keep away. And we didn't want them running the, the fourth quarter out on us. So uh, their corner had made a really aggressive play uh, earlier in the game on Cam Franklin when we threw him the ball. He jumped, uh, he jumped a short route really quick. So we just felt like uh, here's a chance where uh, we can take uh, advantage of an aggressive corner. We can show him a short route and go double move and go deep. And uh, if it doesn't even work, there's a chance that 
the safety might even intercept it down there 30 yards down the field. Like a punt. And yeah. we tackle them down there and we got our punt uh, yardage anyway. So mm -hmm. it was, I mean, there's a lot of thinking that goes into what are you going to do here, but those are the thoughts that were <laughs> they were going fast through the head. Hey, I was about to say, <laughs> thinking, how much you don't have much time to think. It's fourth down and nine, and you got to go. You're down 26-20, and obviously – uh, everybody, uh, they sort of loaded the box, I noticed, and they were kind of looking for Cam on sure. maybe play action and maybe a down the line, try to keep it on the zone read. And uh, that double move just, it was right in front of me, Coach, and it was just a thing of beauty, perfect pass. I was just just making sure Cam Franklin was going to hang on to that football because it was a perfect pass. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's nice to see uh, when the plan works, it's beautiful. And, and that's what you, that, as a coach, that's what you're hoping for. You've played eight games, um, and we'll look at the highlights in just a second of the Ennis ball game. But just from a season standpoint, the, the stats that jump out to me, Coach, I talked about time of possession. You had it longer than Ennis. That, that has been true for the whole year. Looking back at the previous at the eight games that, that Jacksonville has played so far, your team is averaging nine more offensive plays a game on average than your opponent, and you've kept the ball an average of seven minutes longer than your opponent. Those two things alone, right there, that's that's how you. That's I think that explains a big reason why you're five and three. Oh, it does. There's no question. It's the style of football we're playing right now, and uh, uh, it's not it's not a uh, it's not an accident. Uh, the strength of our team is our offensive mm -hmm. line. We've got some experienced kids on there. Uh, the other part strength of our team is our quarterback, uh, who can run and uh, and he can throw it when he has to. So uh, we're just playing to our strengths right now, and uh, that's what everybody should be doing. And that just so happens that's where we're at as a team right now. And I think you've mentioned that before. You've mentioned about how this team knows its identity. I mean, and that's why a lot of good football teams sometimes don't do well. They may have the great talent. If you don't know who you are and what you can do, it doesn't matter. And it seems like your team found their identity as you went into district play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing when you watch games on television on Saturday and Sunday and you, you're watching the game as a fan and you're like, why, are they, why aren't they getting the ball to this guy? Or yeah. why aren't they doing this? I mean, this guy is a great player. Why isn't he getting the ball? And it's sometimes people just don't. And a lot of times defense takes stuff away from you. But sometimes people get carried away and don't play to their strengths, and that's what you got to do. Well, it was a big win, Jacksonville, over Ennis. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from last week at Tomato Bowl. Well, Coach, here's uh, just an athletic play by Cam High. Doesn't find anybody, then he's going to circle back and find Will Garland. Yeah, and Will does a great job on the scramble drill here. Uh, we do a little two-minute drill every Wednesday, uh, good on good uh, situation, and uh, that's one of those plays there that we've seen in practice, and, and it's happened in the game now. Defensively, here's their stud running back, Tyson Thompson, running into Scooter. Yeah, what a great player uh, Thompson is, and uh, he had some yards on us, but we did a good job most of the night on him. Here he is on that Ennis power there, right behind his big guy for the touchdown, gets Ennis on the board. Here comes Mr. Automatic, Cesar Guerrero now line up for a 33-yard field goal. This gives you the 10-7 lead, Coach. And again, I know you're very confident in Cesar. We are, and uh, we were talking to the kids this morning in special teams practice about we scored 10 points, six points on field goals, and four autom uh, extra points the other night uh, just on his, on his foot. Here's the Tyson Thompson again, the junior back, breaking a tackle and getting a first down. It was – it had a – had an opportunity there to get a stop. We had to make that tackle there. We didn't wrap up, and uh, I let the kids know about that one. And here's the touchdown pass from Cade Graff to their leading receiver, J.T. Mackey, for the touchdown. Here's Jacksonville defensively right here. Gets the big sack. Scooter Baker coming in. Big run here by Cam High. Wow. 33-yard gain. Our offensive line really does a nice job of opening up holes for, for Cam. Another field goal here, 34 yards. So a 33-yarder, now a 34-yarder. Cesar Guerrero from that right hash, nice job. His confidence is growing uh, every, every week. He made a 50-yarder in practice this morning. Coach, here's where you steal a possession. Yeah, what a great kick by, oh, man, that's amazing. Uh, by Caesar. How do you stop that? I mean, if you're the other team, I mean, it's just a perfect, like a pass almost <laughs> to Jay Sean off his foot. Yeah. Wow. So Jacksonville steals that possession right here. And then the first play right after that, Cam High, 42 yards. 
Watch him run over this guy about the 10, I believe. Yeah, the backside corner gets yeah. up there. and uh, Oh, wow. Uh, great run by Cam. Huge run. 2013 lead for Jacksonville at that point. And then here's their quarterback, Cade Graff, hitting their big guy for 30 yards for the touchdown. Looked like the busted coverage coach. Yeah, or? you got two guys looking at each other saying, hey, wait, I thought you had him. Yeah. So, and it's, that's the one they botched the extra point on a moment ago on that touchdown, and then they get the touchdown run here. Holloway goes in. So they take the lead 26-20 here, Coach, and here's Jacksonville. Huge fourth and nine play. Here's the play we were talking about a moment ago, the double move. Yeah, you can see Cam at the bottom of the screen, make a little double move there. We've got the aggressive corner beat, and Cam outruns them. Wow. You get the extra point, 27-26 Jacksonville. And here comes the fumble recovery. Will Garland punches it. Scooter Baker picks it up. I thought he was going to score here. Gets brought down. And Coach, that was, just, that was a monstrous play. And there's the pink flag we see right there coming out. I don't know what that was for, but you can see that pink flag. And here's the, here's the, the jet sweep, Devin Henry, the senior. Good yeah. blocking. We weren't supposed to score this fast. We were supposed to run that clock out. <laughs> you, uh, do you want to call it back? And no, it? no, we'll take it. But uh, <laughs> we were planning on running that two minutes off the clock. I'm not sure what Ennis was thinking here. They could get a first down at the five. This is their last play. They do the uh, double pass. Why were they thinking they could throw this ball again after it went beyond the line of scrimmage? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure he was supposed to throw it backwards. Uh, they ran it the similar play in the state championship game two years ago, and we talked to the kids about it during the timeout. And, uh, even though we were ready for it, they almost they almost pulled it off. Yeah, again, I mean the ball was beyond the line of scrimmage. You can't throw it back and then forward again. So they just, I guess that play was designed, as you said in that state championship game, they ran it correctly. Yeah, he was supposed to throw the ball backwards again. It was supposed to be a really long lateral, and the kid uh, just happened to throw it forwards, and, and we benefited from it. Coach, what a win! I mean, it was uh, the post game celebration was. Um, a lot like a playoff win, mm -hmm. and what this program has been through through so many years. And you know, you talk about uh, I don't know last year's last year, but uh, it was an ugly game at Ennis last year. And to come back and get that win over the well, the you know the the team that's picked to win the district, sure. huge win. Yeah, I mean, we were picked last, and they were picked to win it. So uh, our kids have worked really hard, and uh, I'm just so proud of them to to see their hard work pay off. So this week it is the Lindale Eagles coach coming to town and the hard luck team, Mike Matter does such a great job with that program, but my goodness, they've just, uh, it's, they lost 38 seniors from last year. A lot of people don't realize that, 38 seniors. And uh, that they had the capability coming here. They barely, they lost to Corsicana in Shocker, another overtime game for Corsicana. This is a team that can come to the Meta Bowl and give you some problems. Yeah, the issue with them is uh, they're young but now they're young and they're in game nine. So those kids that were young in game one and, and didn't play very well early in the season are starting to play better. They forced, they pushed uh, Corsicana all the way to overtime last week. So you're not talking about as young a team as we were talking about. They're the team you wanted to play early in the year when they had all yeah. those young kids with no experience. Now they've got uh, eight games under their belt. They're making uh, fewer mistakes, and they're a lot better football team right now. Of course, the coach's son, Coach Metter's son, is the quarterback. He's a three-year starter, and they got Cameron St. Louis, a big tight end. You got to look out for. Uh, talk about what Lindale does that uh, that your, your defense is going to have to watch out for. Uh, they, I mean, the Metter kid is so competitive and so well coached. You can tell he's a coach's kid. Uh, his mechanics are are are, are spot on. Uh, and he can make plays with his feet uh, when he has to. They've got a really nice uh, passing game. They throw a lot of shallow crosses. Uh, they take advantage of you when you drop into coverage. Uh, they're just so well coached. They've got a good, a good system. So you go from the wide open passing offensive White House to the uh, inside the tackle stuff with Ennis, and now you're back to the to the spread offense with Lindell. Not a, not a big change for you defensively, I wouldn't think, to adjust. Yeah, uh, the only difference is they do a little bit more of um, uh, of a power run game. They're a little bit like mm -hmm. us. They'll line up and they'll, they'll give the ball to the tailback. They've got a big tailback that they've just started using the last couple weeks, uh, and they've got that with the ability to throw the ball uh, pretty well. They got beat last week, 21-20, missed extra point in overtime that cost them the game. And uh, um, so obviously, 
Corsicana is undefeated in district and they played them that well. What did they do defensively? What did they do defensively to play so well against Corsicana? They've got uh, they've got two really good defensive linemen. Uh, both of them are, are college prospects. One of them I think is going to North Texas, mm. uh, but they are big, good, strong-looking kids. They uh, they're going to give us fits up front. So a lot on the table this week. Uh, obviously, uh, you, you win the ball game. Mathematically, you're in the playoffs. Correct. Correct. If we can get the third win this week. Uh, we can finally breathe easy. How, how much of that is that playing into uh, your, you and your coaching staff talking to the players this week? I mean, you know, it's not a it's not a sense of urgency, obviously, but it's a take care of business type of thing. How much have y'all talked about that with your team? Uh, constantly um, trying to stay level headed, trying to understand. Uh, we've put ourselves in a situation we're not used to being in. We have been the hunter. Mm -hmm. For so long, we've been the ones trying to sneak up on people and pull the upsets and and uh, and try to put ourselves in this position. And now we've put ourselves here, and now we've become the hunted. Mm -hmm. And and Lindale is going to bring everything. They've got the gun loaded. They're going to come in here. They're going to fire all their bullets. There's no telling how many trick plays we're going to see, how many onside kicks, how many fake punts. They've got to win. They, I mean, we're fixing to get their best shot. Yeah, the last time that Jacksonville was not dependent on something else to happen to get in the playoffs was 2010, six years ago. So it's been a while since you basically controlled your own destiny. And I know that's something that you, you just said that you, you've been talking about with the kids. Talk about the emotional part of winning a big game like Ennis. You, you're staying at home. That helps, not being on the road, obviously. Let down emotionally. Have you talked about that with them? Uh, just a little bit. Mo mostly uh, we talk about – we try to stay focused and – and they came in Monday morning, they were all happy, and I, I had about 10 clips from the Ennis game mm -hmm. to show them where we just played terrible. I mean, we played bad football on about 10 plays, and I showed it to them and I explained to them, those 10 plays will get you beat by Lindale, and we can't afford that. We've got to get better every week. It, I mean, it's okay to be a good football team, but if, as long as we're here right now, why not go ahead and keep working? I mean, we've, we've put all this time and effort mm -hmm. in. Why not become a great team? Why not keep pushing? and make yourself a great team. Well said. Uh, keys to the game to get the win over Lindale. Nothing's changed for us. I mean, we've got to possess the ball. We've got to run the ball. We've got to run the clock. And we have to uh, force one or two turnovers and not get, not get the trick play run on us, not give up an onside kick, not give up the fake punt, because we know they're coming in with it. Well, it's Jacksonville versus Lindale Tomato Bowl, week nine, coming up as the Fighting Indians try to clinch that playoff spot, a playoff spot they haven't been in since 2012. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock on 103.9, kickoff at 7.30. And if you want to listen to the game online, you can see that address right there on your screen. For Head Coach Wayne Coleman, I'm Matt Montgomery. We'll see you next time right here on Smoke Signals.